So in this video, we're going to talk about how to pack a pasture pipette in order to do a simple column chromatography. Now, I'm going to break this video into several sections, um, mostly because there's a lot of camera rearrangement to make this visible to you. But the art of any pasture pipette chromatography is this little pasture pipette here. And what we have to do first is we have to take our glass wool and we're going to have to pack it into the bottom of this tube. Now, there's kind of an art with this, and I say that because if we pack it too loosely, a lot of our packing material is going to fall through the column. And so we don't want to pack it so loosely that all the sand and all the silica gel comes out. And actually, the sand's going to help with this quite a bit because the sand's a lot chunkier than the silica gel. So it kind of like creates an extra barrier to keep it from falling through. But the other extreme is that if we pack it too tight, basically our mobile phase can't make it through the filter. It's going to take a long time. So to do this, what I like to work with is a little bit of steel wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the end over just a little bit. If you end up with keeping that sharp end, it might actually poke through the bottom of the, the glass wool. And I'm going to bend it just slightly at the end so this way I can pack down the glass wool. Now for the glass wool itself, I'm going to kind of rotate it and kind of pack it down into this little wad. And then I'm going to take this wad, I'm going to push it into the top of the pipette. And I'm sorry for not putting my goggles down, but I do kind of need to see this, particularly for this video. So take it, cram it all the way down there, and you can already see this is trying to give me problems. Oops. And this is honestly the hardest part, is getting this glass bowl into the bottom of the pipette. After this, it's actually really straightforward. Okay, so I kind of got the wad there in at the very top. I'm going to push it down with my glass, with my wire. I'll get it all the way to the bottom. Start pushing it down. Work on this a little bit closer so you can see it. I know this has got to be the most gripping thing watching me press it down over and over and over again. Basically, we don't want it, we don't want the glass wool running up the side of the pipette. We want to all push down into the little tip. And here we go. There's our first step. We've got the glass wool at the very bottom of the pipette. This glass wool is going to serve basically as a filter to keep the sand from going through. Then we're going to add the silica and add the top layer of the sand. So. Let's go to part two, which is packing in the sand. So to put my sand in, the first thing I'm going to want to do is actually mount this to a ring stand. Now the right clamp we're going to use here is actually one of these like C-shaped clamps that clamp together. Now ideally I would work with something smaller than this, but that's all I have access to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my clamp into position, and I'm going to take my pipette, and what I want to do is I want to wrap the center of it with my packing material. So in this case I've got some cotton. I want to pack this as tight as I can, and this is going to serve as the support for the pipette. So when I get it all in there, I'm going to slide it down into my holder, and this should keep my tube pretty secure. And what I want to be able to see on both sides of my pipette here, let's see if you can bring it in for you, is that underneath I can see the top of the glass wool. So I want to be able to see if there's anything getting ready to loot off the column. And I can also see above the column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the column to this point. And this will give me the ability to see if I've got solvent in there. And this will also give me the ability on the bottom to see if I've got anything coming off the column. And now I'm ready to start adding the sand. Now, now for the first sand layer, I want roughly half a centimeter of sand. This doesn't need to be like measured precisely. Just keep it a half centimeter. The reason for this is the trade-off. This centimeter, half centimeter of sand base is going to cover up for any of the glass wool that I wasn't able to pack all the way down. It's also going to create a nice base for the silica gel. But I don't want it so thick because it's not going to be as fine green as the silica gel, so I can end up getting basically my layers spreading out if I do this. So I want to keep it thin enough that I don't get bad spreading, but I also want to keep it thick enough that I create a nice base for my silica gel. Now, this is a really hard thing to do because you're basically having to pour a little bit of sand into the top of this test tube. 
and you are going to get some spillage on the bench. Yeah, you can kind of see, I don't know if you could actually see in the video, it spilled quite a bit here on the bench. But when you're done, you can tap it down just a little bit. And what you're going to end up with is just your first half centimeter of sand. And from here, this is where we start adding the silica gel. All right, so now we're ready to add the silica gel. Now, we're to the point now where if we screw up, we have to completely start over. So if we add too much sand, we could always pour it back out. Now we need to be really careful with adding the silica gel and the sand that follow because if we add too much, we can't pour it back out. Now we're going to fill it to roughly a half centimeter beneath um, where we plan on stopping the column. Now the nice thing about the pasture pipette is there's usually a glass ring in there. So we're going to fill it to half a centimeter with that. And to kind of help with this process, I've created a, a funnel using a piece of white paper. I wasn't so worried about that with the sand before because it's just sand. This is actually silica gel. And so I'm a little bit worried about, you know, basically spilling the silica gel. So let me put a little bit into a beaker. Now the silica gel is super finely dispersed, it's a very fine mesh. So it is going to try to scatter on me a little bit. This is going to take quite a bit. Again, I'm sorry for not wearing safety goggles. It just kind of helps um, with making these videos. Also, don't be like me and start getting impatient and try to cram a whole bunch of silica gel in there. Because remember, once you put it in there, you can't get it back out. We want to leave about a half centimeter headspace to add the sand. And the sand is just kind of there to protect our silica gel when we start adding the what we're working with. All right, so I've got it in there. I'm going to pull my funnel out so you can see. And you can see there's still a lot of silica powder in there. And I'm also going to give it a few taps. And the reason I'm giving these taps is I want, first of all, I want the gel to pack down. The second is that I also want to knock off anything that's clinging to the side of the wall. And that is now the second half of our chromatography column. So now we're ready to add the sand for the last step. All right, last step, we're gonna put on that top layer of sand. Now we've got the filter, I've got a funnel back up here. I would use a different funnel than you did for the silica because there is gonna be some silica powder still trapped. You don't wanna get a mixture here. But to this, I'm gonna add my last little bits of sand. And I'm going to put it up to that little glass ring there at the top. Now that I've got it up there, take it off. Give it a little tap for good measure. And that's it. I've actually created a pasture pipette chromatography column. And if you take a look at it, you can definitely see I've got the glass wool on the bottom, sand, silica, and sand with my rough headspace on top. Make sure I got enough room for my solvent. Now when I go to finally put this up, what I want to make sure I see when I'm looking at it, and I'll bring up to the camera so you can see it, I can see my layer of sand on bottom, I can see my layer of sand on top, and now I'm ready to go to actually perform chromatography.